Okay, how many here have heard on the news that because of global warming, everything's bad? We're having more deaths, we're having more cyclones, more tornadoes, more... more has everybody gotten that impression from the news? I'm going to show, in four charts, I'm going to show you raw data. Are you ready? This is fun. You know why it's fun? <laughs> oh, did the cherry pick the sun? Okay. These are deaths due to extreme events. Now, true, a lot of the reason that back here in the 1930s, we had a lot more deaths because we didn't have good doctors. But, of course, next year we'll have that problem again. <laughs> that 
think global warming models are good. No greenhouse gas model predicted the recent cooling. Now they can predict it now, they just change their coefficients. So, well, we know that, but it'll get warmer tomorrow. That's what the climate change guy said. But you go back before the cooling, you go back to 1998 and look at every prediction from there. No model showed that last 11 years of cooling. None. So, therefore, we're going to believe the current models. You know, climate change crisis is an oxymoron. And frankly, it's silly. It's the world's safest bet. You're going to let somebody tax our economy and everything that we buy on a world's safest bet? Are you really going to let that happen? I don't think so. Consensus. You know, I, I got to move on. I, I, I don't want to run out of time. Okay, most important chart here. This doesn't talk about solar effects, which are real important, but this talks about several other things. <coughs> and they are so much stronger in being the thermostat to the climate temperatures than greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gas increases as it gets warmer, right? Up and down. But the thing that really is the thermostat that controls it is the formation of clouds and precipitation. If you, this is actually, I doubled this just to be sure that I wasn't being optimistic, but the data shows that a 1.2% change in precipitation offsets a doubling of CO2 in the atmosphere. Really? How come we're not told about that? There's an honest reason that we're not told about that. Is formation of clouds and precipitation is too chaotic to model. But the scientists cannot model that. They can't even model for next week, much less next century. But it is an important thermostat that keeps the planet at the right temperature. Also, the uh, Pacific heat vent, which dumps a lot of heat when it gets to a certain, certain level. Okay, only the trace greenhouse gas, you remember that little red block, that's the only thing that can be blamed on human behavior, and that's why the focus is there. Water vapor is the primary greenhouse gas, overwhelming the CO2, but I'm going to make a proclamation, I could be, my predictions are usually wrong, wrong but I am going to predict that the e, even the EPA will not call water vapor a pollutant. <laughs> Okay, we're almost done. Observation. Man can measure the past. Recently we can measure it accurately, but we can measure the past. But man cannot code a computer to predict global temperature changes. We can code a computer to show the effect of greenhouse gas, which is tiny, but we cannot code a computer to show, to predict what temperature the globe will be in the future. Clearly. Man has not demonstrated a reliable ability to himself affect global temperature. The activists will tell you that man can make the planet hot. Right? And man is making the planet hot. I will tell you that man can't change the temperature of the planet right now. See, oh, warm periods are good, not bad. It would be beneficial to have a bit more warming than present. Big changes. Up to a certain level, you get above a certain level of CO2 and it has very little effect on the greenhouse gas warming. But where we are now, up to a certain level, it would be better for the planet to be a little warmer. Better for us to feed the world. Better for us, uh, for plants to grow. It is the base, uh, the bottom of the food chain. You now we talk about the food chain being the little animals, and we're the big ones. Well, all of them eat. Some of them eat each other, but the ones that eat plants, that's really the base of the food chain. And the, the plants love CO2. That's why we give them a little more every once in a while. I really have. 